Alright, so here we go. It's in there, it's running. This says, thing here says we're using 8 watts. I would tend to believe that. Anyway, we've got the little um, Holtz machine at the top. It charges up the capacitors, and the capacitors become um, a variable capacitor bank. And we've got them jumping from this side to that side, this side to that side. And it's quite a bit of power. I like it. Um, and remember, the big thing here is that um, 8 watts of power and it's only losing, <coughs> it's probably only costing 1 watt or something to make that uh, because it's costing 7 or 8 watts to get it running at that speed anyway so you can hear the motor slow down a bit and the revs slow down a bit when it loads up it's playing havoc the, this discharge is playing a bit of havoc but we're going to pull it apart I'm going to pull it apart and put in the um, I've got to put a spark gap on this side around here and put a spark gap here to discharge it when it overcharges and I'm going to put um, I might increase the motor. I've got another rotor here somewhere that goes at a, uses a bit more power, so it'll probably start using, if this one's using 8 watts, the next one will use 12 watts, which should give it a nice consistent. Actually, I'm going to up the voltage. It's at 11.6 volts now, so I'm going to up that to 13, 14 volts, which I can do now. I'll pause and do that, and we'll see what happens. So, <coughs> I've hooked up the battery charger, and we're, ooh, we're going to back that off. And you do need a way to discharge it. I've got, oh, there it goes. So it slows down a bit. Oh, 10 watts. So I've got another one there that's got a lot more torque, another rotor, but maybe I'll keep this rotor and just try and... Um... Anyway, we're going to pull it apart and see if we can't get the voltage up. Stop this breakdown that's happening in here. Oop, there it goes. So we'll just see, here we go. And the transformer, this is supposed to be the transformer, but I'm just having a lot of trouble with it. I'm going to keep working my way through it. And maybe I need to have it separated. Yeah, the charges have leaked in there now, and now they're shorting out real easy. So I'll pull the part, and we're going to heavily lacquer the rotor in there. We'll get the rotor out, and we'll heavily lacquer it. But it's good. It's a good concept. I like it. Bit of fun. You learn a lot. Hi guys, here you go. I'll go as quick as I can. This is about the fifth take of this because it's just dragging on. Tesla's book on variable capacitor stuff. Um, and he calls it alternating current electrostatic induction apparatus. This is it here. Or oh, this is something similar. It's not the same. Um, if you want to learn about electrostatics, this is a great book too. You can get these, both these books probably on Amazon or something. I don't know. Well, I did. I got mine on Amazon. I paid a fortune. But anyway, there's, there's books out there. We'll run through it real quick. We have a battery to drive it. We have a volt amp meter to measure how much it's costing to run it. And then when we get output, we can see how much it slows down. And I've got a taco meter and an amp meter so I can see it's lost three RPM and it's cost and the, you know, so you can work out your costs. And to me, it's really good. It, 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 it's not right, it, it, anyway. I like it because the velocity is perpendicular to the force. So the force on this capacitor plate is perpendicular to the surface, the force is this way. My discs are spinning that way, 90 degrees to it, it doesn't slow down. Um, I use roll pins for my inner core. Here's an inner core. So that is your coil, you've got to wind your wire on. I'm using 0.7mm wire. 
Iron roll pin for a core there. Grade 8 bolt for here. That's 60 mil, so that's exactly the right length for all this. Um, and I might... I'll pull it apart and I'll have all the pieces laid out on the table. I'll take a photo so you can see all the pieces in there, little screws a lot. Um, capacitor plates. We've got a Holtz machine at the top that charges it up here. Holtz machine charging it. Uh, variable capacitor bank, jump, jump, jump. Motor driving it down the bottom here. Um, threaded bar. So this is all 3D printed except for threaded bar. 4G, 6G screws that I use. Um, around here somewhere. A little bit of electrical stuff. It's high voltage. It goes in there to protect the, to stop the leakage from the rotor. So there's, it's missing. You need to buy that and put it in there. Um, you can't print it. And yeah, there's some of the little screws that I use. 4G and 6G little stainless steel screws. Real quick, is there anything else? Yeah, I can't remember if there's anything else. Um, I'll put this on the internet, see as go. If anyone's interested, I'll try and put more stuff on about it. I really like it and keep working with it. And yeah, we'll see how we go. All right, I hope you all have fun doing it. I've used 30 mil magnets here, 30 mil and 20 mil magnets are on this. So it costs money. Sticky stuff, that's sticky aluminium tape. You just buy it at the hardware store. And uh, you can knock it in a roll like this, and they use it to insulate your house or whatever, insulation. And you just stick it on and cut it with a knife or whatever. And then glue over the top of it to protect it. And that's about it. Um, 3D printed. I made it glow in the dark. A lot of this stuff's all glow in the dark, so it glows in the dark. When I turn the lights out, check the sparks and all that. And I'm not sure if there's much more I can tell you. I'll pull it all apart. I'll do a video and pull it apart. We'll pull it all apart, strip it down. You can see it go together and in there. When you do print this, the big problem is these trays don't slide in and out too easy. They're tight, so you have to lift it up a bit and pull it open. And it'll open up a bit, and then they'll go in and out easy, and then you slide it down on top and see how you go. Everything's been put on the lathe and just tidied up on the lathe. It's pretty close, but it's undersized, so that bearing... I think it's a 19 mil bearing. You have to put that on the lathe and then turn that out to suit the bearing. It's a six mil shaft, and it's just threaded bar, and the bearing, is, you know. So there's three bearings in that rotor, and then there's two bearings in this one here, and then that's it. There's only five bearings all up. Um, and that's about it. I don't think you'll have to just, I'll put, if people ask questions, I'll put more out there. All right, no worries, thanks, bye. So here we go. I've got the transformer running and it's um, charging up the, anyway it's run the current through there and here's the, you can see what happens when we short it out and avoid the transformer, come a bit closer if you like, so it is, see if, that's a resistance, so if I shorten it, it you know, it does, there's too much resistance in the wire that I used in this primary transformer, but it's still charging up that capacitor. So we'll turn it off and I'll quickly measure the voltage in that capacitor. I can't go near it when it's running because of the voltage. Uh, it gets too high, it knows that there's voltage there. But, if we stop it, Right, here's the voltage. Come over here and have a look it's at the at voltage. It's at 12, it's at 13, it's at 14. 20 it's volts. Six. So it's charging. It's almost run out. It's charging capacitor up to 20 volts. See the voltage down here? Are you getting that voltage? 22 volts on that capacitor. So that's pretty good. That should be almost enough to make a spark. If we want to get a spark across it. Maybe something like this. Woo! Made a little spark. There we go. So yeah, real electricity. Yeah, so, that's good, mate. That's good. Alright.